Hey, good morning and welcome to Northlands Church. If it's your very first time, a special welcome to you. My name is Tyler, I'm one of the pastors here at Northlands and we are so glad that you are joining us. To give you an idea of what to expect in our time together, we'll start off with a time of worship led by our incredible worship team and our leaders, JJ and Savannah. After that, I'm really excited for you to hear a testimony about healing from one of our family members, Anna Amison. And then we will finish up with a message from our senior leader, Greg Haswell. Before we get going though, can I just open us up in a time of prayer? Would you pray with me? Lord, thank you so much for your church. Thank you that, that we are called not just to be the hope of the world, but we are called to uh, unify with each other and to encourage one another to good works. So Lord, I, I just pray that you would encourage us with your spirit for good works today, that you are moving among our households and that even though we're physically apart, you are spiritually connecting us in profound and beautiful ways. Jesus, have your way in our community this morning. And Lord, we just pray your blessing and peace over all of our families. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship together.
let's quiet our hearts for a moment. Sing this bridge one more time, full of faith. You take. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good, God. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. Split the sea so I could walk 
right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. Yes, they are. You rescued me so I could stand and sing that I am a child. You split the sea so I Split the sea so I could walk right through. My fears are drowned in perfect love. Yes, they are, yes, they are. You rescued me so I could stand and sing that I am a child of God. Oh, yes, I am, yes, I am. says about me is true. I'm coming back to you. Ooh. I'm coming back to you. Ooh. I'm coming back to you. Coming back to you. Ooh, yeah. I'm coming back to you. Right in your arms, I'm coming back to you. What you say about me is true. What do you say about me is true. I belong to you. I belong to you. Oh, what you say about me is true. I belong to you, Lord. Right here in your arms. Right here in your arms. I'm coming back to you. Ooh, I'm coming back to you. Ooh, I'm coming back to you. Ooh, I'm coming back to you. What you say about us is true. And what you say about who we are is true. And how that affects our lives and the way that we see the world is true. And so right now where we are, we say yes to the identity that you've placed on us, the sonship, the daughtership that you've brought us into this reality that we are no longer the world's, but we're yours. And that reality is more true than any other reality that we'll ever face. We have always been and will always be yours. We sink into that. We say yes to that. We receive that. And we let it transform us from the inside to the outside. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Savannah, JJ, and the rest of the worship team, thank you again for bringing your strength and blessing our community, helping us worship our King this week. Uh, as a part of our worship, we love to celebrate God's goodness and power in our lives by sharing testimonies, stories that have been happening in our lives of how God has moved in profound ways. And today, I'm excited for you to hear a story from Anna Amison. She is one of the members here at Northlands, and she has had a story about her battling with migraines for over four years and God supernaturally healing her. Would you check out her story? Hi, my name is Anna Amison, and I want to share my story of healing. So about four years ago, I started having chronic headaches and migraines. And when it first started, it was pretty much a constant headache that never really went away. So we tried pretty much anything imaginable to try and give me some sort of relief, but nothing ever seemed to work. And we never really got answers as to why it was happening. It kind of just got worse and worse until it got to the point where I was missing tons of school and just couldn't really function like a normal person my age. So um, we tried a whole bunch of different things, including a bunch of different medications. We tried a nerve block and we tried getting IV infusions. And I ended up seeing a chiropractor and a neurologist. Um, I definitely saw some improvement, but I just can't really remember a week going by without having at least one headache. From the beginning, people were definitely praying for me and just praying for God to heal me, but honestly, I'm not sure that I really believed that was possible. Um, on July 12th, I remember having a terrible migraine. It was the worst it had been in a very long time. And I just remember being in tears late that night, begging God to heal me and just saying over and over again, Matthew 21, 22, and um, that I believed he was healing me at that moment. And as I was saying those words, I just heard this whisper say, you are healed. And I haven't had a single headache since that night, even with things that would normally trigger me. So I guess with all of us, I've just learned that um, our God is a God of miracles and He does want to heal us. We just have to believe that He can and that He will. And I'd say the invitation is just to trust Him and trust His timing and that He can do what seems impossible because four years ago I would have never believed I'd ever be healed and I haven't had a single headache in almost two months. Anna, thank you again for being bold and sharing your story. I know it's going to impact many lives. It has impacted mine personally. Uh, I love the, the verse that Anna referenced. I just wanted to read it to us as a community, as part of our invitation to hearing this story. She said, Matthew 21, 21 to 22 says this, And Jesus, speaking to his disciples, said, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and be thrown into the sea, it will happen. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. One of the things that I ask for every single week is if you're trusting for God to move in your life, I ask, hey, would you extend your faith right now? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So you might say, Tyler, I've got a lot of doubts. I don't know that I have faith. Well, guess what? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. That comes from scripture, but also hearing the stories of believers being impacted in profound ways. So when you hear a story like Anna's and something in you says, man, I want that to be my story. A longing in you says, man, I wish I could tell a story like that. That's faith rising up in you. Why don't we have faith first and foremost in the nature and character of our God who is faithful to move in our lives, and then we'll see faith rise up for miracles, signs, and wonders, the impossible to take place in our lives. So even if you have faith like a small mustard seed, the scripture says that's all you need for God to move. So right now, would you extend your faith with me? Would you extend your faith just like Anna did? Would you cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, would you move in my life? If you need healing in any way, physical, emotional, mentally, even spiritually, I know that God wants to heal you. Why do I know that? Because he is in the business of taking that which is broken and making it whole every single time. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for your power and your might. But Lord, not just your power and might, but your goodness and faithfulness to use that power on our behalf. You are so generous and you are continually moving in our lives in every single way. The, the ways that we acknowledge and are able to see and even in the ways that we are unaware, we know that you are always moving. You want today more than ever to take that which is broken and to make it whole. This is the beautiful message of the gospel. 
And so Lord, I ask, would you use our lives as, as illustrations, as prophetic messages of your gospel truth to the world around us. When people look at our lives, that they would say clearly, these have been people who have been touched by Almighty God. We thank you for Anna's story, and we thank you for all the stories that are rising up now, testimonies for the future that are to come because of this story. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, with that, before we dive into today's message, I just want to highlight once again to stay connected to this community and to have any resources that you might need during this season, you can go to northlands.church forward slash newsletter to find all those details. You'll find things like the business prayer. It's going to be happening this Friday, 7 a.m. via Zoom. We would love for you to join us for that. If you are a business leader or planning to start a business, we want you to be encouraged and a part of a community of other men and women who are, uh, are, are ministering together through their businesses. We want to encourage you and we want you to find innovation from heaven from the Lord in your business. So would you join us for that time again, 7 a.m. this Friday via Zoom. Now with that, I'm gonna hand it off to our senior leader, Greg Haswell, for a quick message on generosity. Hello friends, in Proverbs 18 and verse 16, there's this very interesting scripture that sounds counterintuitive to Christians, but it says the gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. It sounds a little bit like a bribe. It sounds a little bit like if you gave a lot of money, then you can get entrance into some great places. The simple truth is that human nature responds to how we use our finances. And Proverbs, in, in, in the wisdom of Solomon, he says, listen, if you, if you bring a gift and it's a good gift and it's a nice gift, that gift has an opportunity. It is a way maker and it ushers you into the presence to have some conversations. Now, I just want to say, uh, if we just take that principle and think about it a little while, the, the way we give our gifts makes a way behind that gift. If you give something, especially when it's under the guidance of the Holy Spirit to somebody, it makes a way into their heart and it ushers you in and gives you an opportunity to have a conversation. Now, the wisdom of that conversation and the focus of that conversation is something that should be the subject of great prayer, I believe, and listening to the Lord's voice. But nevertheless, whenever we are giving something, and if we're not giving it, uh, you know, when, when the, the recipient doesn't know who we are, but every Every time I give a gift and they know who I am, I understand that that gift is making a way so that I can say something. So I would like to encourage us. We'd like to be this kind of people that when we give generously, especially when the Lord has said, I want you to give something away, give. And it's, it's not an anonymous gift, but, but the Lord said, no, you can let them know. Give. But I want you to understand that behind that gift, there is a message that the Lord wants you to bring. Use that space. Fill up that gap with encouragement and blessing and hope and a, and a message about the kindness and the goodness and the beauty of God. And you'll find that what you give not only has an, an immediate impact with the finances you gave, but the, the restorative power, the encouraging power of your words that go along with that gift have eternal power and fruit in them. So next time you give something, I would just like to encourage you to not just give it, but to pray earnestly, Lord, once I give this gift, it's going to open a way and it's going to usher me in to a, a place where people's hearts are open and they're listening to what I have to say. So Lord, give me the more precious treasure that is something from you, that is an encouragement from your heart. So give and give the greater treasure of encouragement and hope and a revelation of who God is. That's the kind of people we're wanting ourselves to be. We're going to bless and scatter gifts abroad. And as we do, we're going to proclaim the beauty and the gospel of our King. And we're going to trust God to change lives forever. Thanks for being so generous. We really appreciate the generosity of our church. We've been astounded at what God has been doing through you. And thank you so much for your heart for our church. It has been such a blessing to us. God bless you. Welcome, friends. It's good to have you with us on this Sunday morning uh, and welcome to this message. Uh, today, I'd like to remind us of some truths that are going to be centered around revelation, I think, and brings 
peace to those who embrace it. This is a message not for people who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a message for those who've been born again. Because if you haven't been born again, you can't even see the kingdom, let alone function in it. And in these important times, in these interesting times, uh, we need to be centered on the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we lose sight of Him, we sort of devolve into the self-sufficient group uh, of concerned citizens that run back and forth trying to win for ourselves uh, a place that Jesus is intimately involved in creating for us. I'm going to try and communicate this truth from a few different passages of Scripture today. And uh, I'm going to be focusing around Psalm 2 and then looking at Romans 11 as well. And I'm hoping that as we share around some of these things, a clarity and a peace will settle on your hearts and that we'll find a way forward, a, a rich deposit of scripture that will lead us forward into the next few months. The, the psalm, and I want to take us to Psalm 2 and start right there, but Psalm 2 starts with this great idea. It says, Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and their rulers band together against the Lord and against His anointed, saying, Let us break off their chains and throw off their fetters. This is a general push from those who don't believe, who have no relationship with God, um, and, and they don't know that they want to surrender their lives to Jesus, and they don't want His rule over their lives. They wish for and imagine a world free from the constraints that an eternal and sovereign God will maintain over them. Let us break off their chains, they say, of the Lord and of His anointed one. Let's throw off their shackles, they say about Him, and we'll seek to be free from the logical and loving limits that God imposes on people, which are for our good and which create lasting peace. And where these have been broken, they result in harm and destruction. And so God sets logical and loving limits over mankind, and everything is for our good. It's for our benefit. He means for us to live prospered and peaceful and beautiful lives. But these people say, you can't tell me what I can say. You can't tell me what to drink, what I must smoke, what I can inject. You can't play, place limits on my sexuality. You can't speak about my habits. You have no right, God, to tell me what I can and cannot do. They want to throw off the Lordship of Christ. They want to throw off the reality that there is a God who watches over all mankind. They want to be free from any constraint that God might put on their lives. Now verse 4, Psalm 2 says, The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them, and He rebukes them in His anger, terrifies them with His wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. Somehow people got it into their hearts that enough of, if enough of us think a certain way, then God will be pressured into changing His opinion. He'll be forced to conform to our standards. But the Bible says God laughs at that notion. And He says, no, no, listen, listen to me. I've installed the, my king, the person that I choose, in the place of my choosing. Who I choose and where I choose, that's where authority will come from. It's not going to come from your perceptions, limited as they are. God has set up His King and He is going to cause Him to rule. Verse 7, I will proclaim the Lord's decree because He said to me, You are my son and today I will become your father. Ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You'll break them with a rod of iron and you'll dash them to pieces like pottery. See, all the nations were given to Jesus as His inheritance by God. God said to him, you ask me, son, and I'll give them to you. And so all of this was established before any man ever drew breath. All things were created by one person and for one person. This is Jesus' universe, and He is delighted to share this universe with us who He has created. But it is a massive overreach and an incredible lack of understanding that allows any creature to assume that they can put off the Lord Jesus Christ, they can shun the Creator and find a better way to live without Him. So here is what the psalmist says in Psalm 2. Here's the solution. Therefore, you kings, be wise and be warned. You rulers of the earth, serve the Lord with fear and celebrate His rule with trembling. Kiss His Son, or He will be angry, and your way will lead to your destruction. For His wrath can flare up in a moment, 
Blessed are all who take refuge in Him. This is the great call of the Scriptures to the kings and the rulers of the earth, those people who feel like they're in control of anything that's going on. He says, listen, if you, if you want to be wise and you want to be warned, this is what you need to do. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate His rule with trembling. Come and submit yourselves. Come and bow down. Now, this is the psalmist's conclusion and his instructional ode to those who have any authority. Serve the Lord with fear. Celebrate His ruling with trembling. Submit yourself to that rule. Work with it. Seek His principles out. Call out to Him. Kiss His Son. Make right with Jesus Christ. For no one who ever put their hope in Jesus was ever put to shame. And everyone who has thrown off His rulership and rejected His life have suffered destruction. That's the simple truth of history. Now, when it comes to presiding, the presiding rule of God, nations will prosper and find righteousness and peace the more they surrender to His Lordship. And they will find no peace and they'll reap destruction when they aren't surrendered to Him. This, again, is a plain fact of history. And as some of you are saying, but Greg, you don't understand the realities we're facing and the struggles that we have in this nation and the, the challenges of this age. Now, I know we're facing some pretty unnerving realities right now, but there is nothing new under the sun. And if you hear nothing else from this message, hear this. The question is, why have these come? See, I believe there is right now in the Spirit a massive invitation from God to come and seek Him out during this time. All of these challenges are His invitation to find refuge in Him, to seek His wisdom, to call on His name. Do not let these circumstances draw you away from the Lord and from His ways. This is the massive invitation. Hey, I know it's confusing. I know they're precious. I know there are many voices. I know there's so much going on. And all of that is God shouting into the microphone. Hey, come to me and find peace. Come to me and get stability. Come to me for wisdom. I'll give you strength. I'll source your life. I'll prosper you in the middle of all of this. This is the grand invitation. And of all people, I don't expect those who can't even see the kingdom to be functioning like this. But us, we who believe, I absolutely expect us to come running to our God. Now, let me take you to Romans chapter 11 to see if there aren't just three ideas maybe I can deposit in your head and heart that will act as kind of a monitor for you in the next few months. That when, you, when you're not sure what to do, when you're not sure what voice to listen to, I hope that these three phrases just stand out in your spirit and help guide you, be an equipping tool for you. So I want to take you to the end of the chapter of Romans 11. Paul has been writing some beautiful things, but he, he ends the chapter with this doxology. And let me read it to you, and then we're going to break it down piece by piece. Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable His judgment and His paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has ever been His counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay Him? And here it is. For from Him and through Him and for Him are all things. To Him be glory forever. Amen. Let me break that down for us. The, Paul says, listen, here's the end of the doxology. This is something that you and I need to just keep in mind. For from Him and through Him and for Him are all things. So let's start with from Him. From Him are all things. The Bible says He, he created all things and everything has their being in Him. He initiated everything. He is the efficient cause of all things. He has the Creator's rights over all things. People say, well, who does God think He is? He thinks He's the Creator God. He acts like He created us all. His expectations are consistent with everything that is, is a created being, having come from His power. That's how He acts. I created all of this through Him. This is the scripture says, of, from Him, of Him, of His power. John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. He is the origin. He is the first cause. Everything springs from His sovereign will and from His great power. Now surely this truth should bring us all pause. 
We should just, just remember this again, because again, remember, Psalm 2 says that the fundamental push of the world is to throw off the rule of God, to, to say, let us be free of the chains that fetter us. We don't want to listen to God. I don't want to have His rulership over me. I don't want God to place any restraints on my life. I want to be free to do whatever I choose to do. And this scripture says, I want you to understand, Paul says, I need you to understand from Him. This idea that everything proceeds from God should give us pause. He has the rights of the Creator and He has the first say. We owe everything to Him. For He created your life and He watches over everything that goes on in it. And and I'm just going to invite you to right now take a moment in your own heart to just turn to the Lord and say, Lord, it all belongs to you. Now, if there is an idea, a strength, a supply, a creativity, they are all from Him. I have no problem with people who use the strength that God gave them to rally support and to push forward, but just make sure that you recognize and acknowledge that this is of Him. Acknowledge His right to be the initiator of your life, the Creator God. It's an inner surrendering to the Lordship of Jesus Christ that perfects the outer performance of our lives. All things are from Him. This idea that things originate but not from God. All things that originated and other people started that He did not initiate are false. Everything that is valid, everything that's true, everything that's good, every good and perfect gift comes of Him. The second piece, there is from Him. The second piece is through Him. For from Him and through Him and for Him are all things. Things exist in balance and exhibit life through Him. This is the great blindness of this age, in my opinion. In this age, there are so many people that assume that we can take what God started and we can do a better job than He could with our own perspectives. Uh, That I have a much better idea than the eternal precepts of God. That's kind of the idea. We've got this, Lord, thank you very much. Uh, We will honor you as the Creator, but if anything's going to happen, it's going to happen now through our ingenuity, our creativity, our conformity together, our synergy. We've got this, Lord. We'll take it from here. This is one of the most profound deceptions of this age. This idea that we can accomplish more than God could accomplish. That sure, the other generations who listened to God, look what a mess they brought us into. But now, by pushing away from God, we can find a great, bold, bright new future. No, my friends, there is no brightness. There is no blessing. There is no hope outside of Jesus. It is through Him. It is from Him and it is through Him. A few years ago, the Lord began to speak about justice. Now, there were many prophetic voices across the country, but three, four, five years ago, began to speak about God's call for justice. And the Lord said it many, many times. And I I perked my ear up because it's one of the things the Lord began to speak to me. And so I recognized a lot of prophetic voices were saying, I'm going to blow the winds of justice across this nation and you should be in prayer about it. And so we began to pray as a church, Lord, send justice, uncover injustice, Lord, blow across this nation and expose. And I remember the first times we prayed that people were a little nervous about that. Should we be doing this? Shouldn't we do, do that? And we began to pray, God, we celebrated the justice of God. See, the foundations of God's throne are built on righteousness and justice. The Bible says that the the scepter of His rule is justice. God measures everything we build in justice measurements. God is a God who loves justice. And so we began to pray this across the nation. And, and, and God's winds of justice on behalf of children began to blow and He began to expose pedophiles. And we, we saw some prominent celebrities and business people go to jail and to be charged because they exploited children. And they were, they were engaging in pedophilia and they were trafficking in children. And we see it ongoingly. Every, every, almost every week we hear about another trafficking ring being busted. And every time I do, I celebrate it because it's a blessing of God, because the Spirit of God began to blow across our nation and say, I'm going to deal with this injustice towards children. 
Now you say, Greg, do you support this? Absolutely. Because God, I believe, initiated it. So we're going to keep praying and responding to whatever the Lord is telling us to do and whatever He shows us in this regard. But I just want you to say, just make sure that what you do now, because He initiated something, it's not just from Him, but it's also through Him that the matter must be established. We can't say, well, God started that, but I'm going to create my own organization now. I'm going to build a political party behind this. I'm going to create something that that now, God, we've got it from here. We'll take it and use our ingenuity to finish what you started. No, the Bible says it is from Him, but it is also through Him that we must get some things accomplished. So I can't engage. See, friends, on a personal level, I, I think there is a 15 cent solution. I think we can deal with these people, and, and I would deal a justice that would not necessarily be the justice of God. I, I wouldn't necessarily go through the whole court situation. I wouldn't necessarily give them their moment to explain. My justice on these kinds of people would be harsher than I believe God and less just. But we have to do it not just uh, because the Lord has exposed it. Now I have to do it through Him in a way that would bring honor to Jesus Christ. We saw the, the winds of justice begin to blow through the nations and expose the sexual harassment of women. And it started in show business, but also in the marketplace and in all sorts of different spheres of life. And various movements flourished as women found their voice in response to the Holy Spirit opening up and showing this avenue that was going on for years in this country. And, and we celebrate. So do you support what, what, uh, what God is doing? Absolutely. I support because I believe this was initiated by the Holy Spirit. He came in, He said, we're not going to have this any longer in this nation. I just want to say, just make sure that if you want to support and join that, that you're doing it through Jesus and not without regard to Jesus. The, the winds of justice started this. It's not just from Him, but it is through Him that we need to accomplish these things. So I'm going to do it through Jesus. I'm going to do it in a God-honoring way. I'm going to go about supporting what the Holy Spirit is doing. I'm going to stand with this reality and say, we need to fix this. Because it is not enough just for, for me not to be somebody who does that. We now have to be anti that. I do not agree with that uh, sexual exploitation of women. I stand against it. But the way I stand against it needs to be consistent through Him. It is from Him, but also through Him that I stand against it. The winds of, in, of justice blew across this land and highlighted racial injustices and various responses to these exposures have emerged. So, Greg, do you support these? Absolutely. Because I believe the Holy Spirit started something. I just want to make sure that we keep praying and we respond to whatever Jesus shows us in this regard. Just make sure that what you do is through Jesus and not without regard to Jesus. The point I'm making is that through Him, it will work. Without Him, without Jesus at the helm, not given His Lordship, not central in the focus, as just as the cause may be, it cannot sustain or bring about what, what the Holy Spirit started. Now, we should be in agreement with what the Holy Spirit has initiated. But we, the believers, are the ones who are called to ensure that the work continues through Him and not in opposition to Him. I don't expect, let me say it again, I don't expect people who don't, haven't been born again, who don't, can't even see the kingdom. I don't expect them to get this, but I do expect that believers, those of us who have named the name of Jesus, those of us who walk with Jesus, I expect us to get it from Him and to act through Him. For us to, to set aside the Lord Jesus Christ and begin in, to employ manners and ways that are not bringing glory and honor to Him, that is the problem. God is the God of justice. It flourishes around Him. It prospers in His presence. And it is extremely difficult to maintain and sustain justice outside of His presence. Because He is the only true source of justice. Because it's made up of so many elements. The, the gauging, the knowing, the savoring, the tasting. The various elements that go into perfect justice. And maintaining that constant balance of perfect justice are extremely hard. Proverbs 24, 17, there's this very interesting scripture because it says, Do not gloat when your enemy fails, and when they stumble, don't let your heart rejoice, or the Lord will see and disapprove and turn His wrath away from them. 
See, in our mind, if somebody does us wrong and we feel fully justified in our own hearts because they were clearly in the wrong, that fully justifies us to sneer and to mock and to delight in their downfall. But that's also grievous to God. Do you understand? So when God looks at that and He sees us celebrating their downfall, He goes, well, hang on now. If I'm going to be perfectly just, I'm going to deal with what they're doing, but I also have to deal with what you're doing. Now, we often feel like the injustices that we've suffered justify us in perpetrating our own injustices. See, justice not sourced and fueled by Jesus, not through Him, can only ever be extremely extremely temporary and man-made. Things that were not started by God need to be maintained and sustained. If if God started something, it must be maintained and sustained by Him. Because all things are from Him and through Him. Jeremiah 9, let the one who boasts, boasts about this, that they know and understand me, says the Lord, that I am the God who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For in these I delight, says the Lord. The Lord delights in kindness. He delights in justice, and He delights to demonstrate them on the earth. Psalm 45, verse 4 says, In your majesty, Lord, ride forth victorious in the cause of truth, humility, and justice. See, we need, to, we need to embrace not just the initiation of God, but through Him, the way He goes about it. We need to do it in His ways. He's out for truth, He's out for humility, and He's out for justice. Because your throne, O God, will last forever and ever, and a scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. Scripture says, from Him and through Him, And for Him are all things. Let's talk about being for Him. All things are for Him. See, you got to get your head around this. This whole creation, this whole universe was created for Jesus. It wasn't created for you. It wasn't created for me. It was created for Jesus. We exist for His good pleasure. We exist so that He can be glorified. We exist to show forth the praises of Him who called us out of darkness. Colossians 1.16 says, For in Him all things were created, things on heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through Him and for Him. If what we're doing and if what we're giving our hearts to is not for Him, then it is an empty effort. For all things that are for Him are going to be eternal. That's what's going to be the measurement of heaven. Was this done for Jesus? If it was done for something else, it will not be eternal. And there is an orientation, I think, that we all need to keep in mind during this season, season especially when there's tension and politic, political stress and divisiveness. We're all free to think whatever we think and we're free to vote our consciences. But my advice to us all is to do whatever we do for Him, for Jesus' sake and in His name, for His kingdom and His righteousness. In 2 Corinthians 5, 8, Paul says this, We are confident, and I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please Him. We have set our heads uh, on this idea that I'm going to stand here and I'm going to do what I do for Him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to exercise my rights and I'm going to uh, minister to people and I'm going to act towards other people for the sake of Jesus Christ. I'm doing it in His name, for His sake, so that He can be glorified. See, God has initiated some beautiful things in our nation. And we as believers of all people on the earth should be tracking with what He's doing. Not only tracking, we should be celebrating and joining in and participating with. That's why I keep saying Pray, ask the Holy Spirit, what should I be doing? Because the tiniest action is better than the greatest intention. We should be doing things to cooperate with the justice movement of God on this earth. It is for, from Him and through Him and for Him. Let me close with this. If we say from Him, through Him, for Him, If you would just keep those three prepositions in your heart, from Him, through Him, for Him. When I say from Him, 
I recognize that He creates all and He's the source of all things. And that means that those who understand this will honor and fear Him. He is the Almighty Creator God. When I understand this, when I bring my life under subjection to this idea that from Him all things happen, it makes me fear and honor Him. I bow my knee, I bow my head, I bow my heart and say, Father, You are the God. You are the Almighty. What is it that You want? When I understand that all things must be sustained through Him, because He's the God who sustains all things by His powerful Word, the Bible says in Hebrews 3, 1 verse 3, he created everything for Him. And He's the ongoing supply of everything that we are going to need. And those who understand that everything is through Him, they keep coming and calling on Him for sustaining wisdom and strength. If I recognize I must do it through Him, then He can never be far from the equation. He can never be out of my thoughts. He can never be far from my prayers. I'm always calling out to Him. I keep coming. It's a repetitive need. I keep coming. I keep calling on Jesus. I need to do everything I'm doing through Him. Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me strength. Lord, show me the way. I keep calling on Him. People who understand that everything is through Him, that's their habit. and for Him, that He created everything for Him, that everything needs to be centered on Him, and it's done for His sake. And those people who understand for Him, they make their goal to please Him. All right, I'm here. Lord, this is for you. What would please you? What would bring you the most joy? What would bless your heart? Here I am, Lord. I'm ready to do something. What brings you joy? What interesting times we live in. And as clearly as I can discern it, they're all conspiring together to create a massive megaphone from heaven. And if you would just but listen to what God is crying out right now, He's crying out loud and strong. Come to me and I will give you rest. The dramatic, urgent, messy call of God in this age is to find refuge in the immovable God. He's sometimes called the rock or the shield or the defender or the fortress or the refuge or the protector or the warrior or the guide or our father. But come running to him. Don't let this age draw you away to worry or fear. Don't let the waves drag away your attention elsewhere. Don't let the whisper come from some other source and say there is another refuge. Why don't you draw aside to this alternative one? Use this time to draw yourself near to God. For well, from Him and through Him and for Him are all things. In the coming months, why don't you set that up as the guide of your heart? From Him, through Him, for Him are all things. And that's the way I'm going to conduct my life. And I suggest it's the way you should conduct yours. God bless and thanks for being with us. Greg, thank you so much for that encouraging message. Before we leave today and close out, I just want to highlight the fact that if you need to stay connected or need any resources during this time, you can do that by going to northlands.church forward slash newsletter. There you'll see all the details for the happenings that are taking place in our community, as well as uh, practical resources that you can utilize during this season that we are in. Now, every single week, we want to close out with a time of ministry. If you need ministry for anything whatsoever, we would love to stand with you and pray with you. The way that we do that is if you go to northlands.church forward slash prayer request, that's going to lead you to a prayer form. We're just going to ask for your basic details, a way to contact and, and over the phone and pray with you. Um, but then we also want to hear your story. What is it that you're trusting the Lord for? What is it that you need uh, help with? We want to stand with you on those matters. But one of the other things that we do here at Northlands is we have words of knowledge. What we see in scripture is oftentimes when believers come together and they wait on the Lord and listen for the Lord and they pray to the Lord, oftentimes the Lord will speak back to us about our circumstances, 
circumstances or situations that we're facing. Perhaps it's a, a single word or a phrase. These are called words of knowledge. And so as we close out, you're gonna see a, a, a graphic come up on your screen of a bunch of words. It might be a phrase or just again, a single word. And if any of those phrases or words resonates with you and you say, hey, I, I think that's about me. I think that's something that connects to my life. We would love for you to connect with us. We have a prayer ministry team that prays for our community every single week. And they ask the Lord for these words of knowledge and they would love to pray with you about that. You don't need a word of knowledge though to receive ministry. So again, if you need prayer for anything whatsoever, or if you believe you have a word of knowledge from the graphic that you'll see shortly, go to northlands.church forward slash prayer request. But with that, have an incredible rest of your Sunday and we will see you next week.